Science Unscripted. Billions of billions of computations, calculations per second are happening right here. Why? Why would you ever need that kind of computing power? One of the answers is a project that hasn't come to fruition yet, but it's about to. This is Europe's answer to ChatGPT. Gabe and I are going to find out how it's connected to these supercomputers right here with a guy named Stefan. Science Unscripted. Yeah, hi, I'm Stefan. Welcome to Jülich. I'm, I'm a researcher in machine learning on supercomputers. We do all kinds of crazy AI, sometimes crazy, sometimes useful AI with the supercomputers and trying to build cool things. Let's start with the supercomputers. Or the supercomputer, is it, is it one big computer here? It's over there, Yeah, I think. What is the name of that fastest one? The fastest one, that's called Jupiter. Jupiter, okay, so real quick, Jupiter. Gabe fastest Matt. computer in Europe. How many phones would you have to put in Jupiter, the, the fastest supercomputer in Europe in the future? How many of these would you have to put in there? In order to be as fast as yeah. Jupiter or has, have as much computing potential. Uh, I would guess you need like a, maybe a million, maybe only a, hundred, a few hundred thousand, but the problem is you will never connect them, be able to connect them fast enough. So, Okay, a million phones. What, what do you, why do you need that much power? What are you doing with that supercomputer or those supercomputers over there? We're doing research uh, and uh, one example is fusion, nuclear fusion, you know that it's promised to be there in 30 years, yeah. since mm -hmm. 30 years. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this is one example, but like AI is other things, there's a lot of different things going on there. Yeah, um, AI, What's, what are the plans? What, what are you going to do here with AI? So we have two main projects going on there. One is a German project that is not so far away from its end, so we working on large language models in this context already for more than two years. Um, and there's a European project with a slightly different focus. Um, our German project, they worked together with collaborators. We have, we have trained a large language model that is probably not as powerful as ChatGPT, but that is definitely an alternative because it's also like, it speaks many European languages uh, and European languages are sometimes really challenging. Um, yeah, and this is going to be released soon, and hopefully we can like, provide something that is useful for, for like, European technology to be developed. Real quickly, because a lot of people either watching this or listening to this, um, I feel like people talk about large language models as if we all know exactly what they are, and I, I'm not sure that's true. What, what is it exactly? What's being built or has been built? So the, when you talk to ChatGPT um, or any other large language model, internally it will like it will see your it will see your uh, what you wrote as a lot of numbers and from these numbers it will perform heavy calculations and it will always try to predict what is the next token in the sequence what is the next uh, what is the, the right symbol that comes after what was there before and so if if it if it speaks it will produce one syllable after the other and this will will build your text and if you want to train them you have to use a lot of data, mostly from the internet, but also like other sources. Uh, and you, you, you essentially teach it to always predict reasonable next tokens, we call them. Mm -hmm. And in this case, tokens are syllables and it's based on, it's based on probability. It's, if what is probably the next syllable or the next word yes. coming in the sequence, and hence that's my answer as a large language model. These tokens are smaller than words, but bigger than letters. It's, there's no good word for it, but tokens. <laughs> Token. And what would be different about this project compared to, let's say, ChatGPT? Um, ChatGPT is behind the curtains of OpenAI, and uh, there is a European company that's called Mistral, building large languages, uh, language models. They are also not not sharing what exactly they do. In the end, you can download them. You can use them also on, on your own laptop uh, if you have a powerful enough laptop. Uh, but you, they will not tell you what exactly they do. For example, they don't tell you what data it was trained on. And we're, sign, we're, we're this is a science project and the thing that we want to do different is we want to share this information so that this is not a secret, this is not secret source anymore, but that like 
people understand what's happening there. So I would be, if I used your project, what is it called? OpenGPTX is the German project. If I used OpenGT, GPT. GPTX, I would be able to see where the answers that I get from it come from. Nah, That's this is... No. <laughs> this is what we would like to have. This is like there's a lot of technology being built there. But so the the thing that you need first is uh, you need to like you need to train the model, and for that training you need a lot of data, uh, and nobody really knows where this data comes from. Hmm. And then like it's more or less a black box. You can it learns to predict this next token and pr to produce the answer step by step, but. You don't know what happens inside of it. You can like take a lot, use a lot of work and inspect what's happening and try to interpret what's going on. But in the end, you, it's really hard to tell why this happens. So here with the OpenGPTX, or probably in the future as well with Trust LLM, that's the European, the European initiative. European project, yes. Um, as the end user, I wouldn't be able to see transparently why I'm getting what I'm getting. But on the research side, on the ac academic side of things, you, for example, would be able to look inside and see the various algorithms or the, how the machine learning works and be able to say, that's why that came out. Is that, is that fundamentally the difference between? It still doesn't solve the problem that when you're talking to large language models, you don't really know why they say what they say. They don't plan, they don't reason, they don't, if it's, it's not even clear if they really understand what they do. There is no, no real intelligence involved, and this is why many people also question that, that it's like talking about artificial intelligence in this context is, is even correct. And I see some point in that. But on the other hand, they're super useful tools, and they will change a lot how, we, how, we, like how information ends up in my brain, because now I can essentially talk to my <laughs> internet mm -hmm. search. Yeah. These things are going to change. Um, but it's still difficult to understand what happens exactly inside. And this is a project that you guys have been spending years on now. Yes. Because now, there's yeah. so much wrong with chat GPT or what exactly, is, that's the premise on which this project is based. What, what is it then that is so wrong with chat GPT? There's not so much wrong. It's a great thing. I am also use it for, for like when I do brainstorming and when I try to get ideas, it can generate great abbreviations and it can do a lot of things, things well. But this is going to be a really a transformative technology. Like a lot of things are going to change how we treat information based on this technology. And so it's, we think that, that like the world should know how they are built and they should, it should not be the, the secret source of some San Francisco based company, but it should be like ideally like general knowledge and in principle everybody like given the right resources should be able to, to, like, to just do it themselves. You just said that the world should know how they're built yes. and in principle I agree with you. How do you stop let's say a foreign adversary or, a, a, or anyone, anyone, a group, a subnational group, from ac potentially accessing this information, how it works, and using it for their own purposes, and maybe tweaking, creating, copy pasting their own model, and then tweaking it to making to make it not so um, altruistic. There, like nobody knows how the technology develops. So currently, I would say uh, the models like are not really dangerous. Yeah, they could tell you how to build a simple bomb, but you can also look this up anywhere. So you will find, it will not provide information that you can't, can't find in, uh, anywhere else. It can generate like false news. It can generate fake information, yes. But this is already like, th this, this you can do already by like paying people in certain countries and they will write stuff for you and they the, the presidential campaigns are influenced uh, by, 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 by agents already and I don't think that this will change a lot due to, due to, due to uh, large language models. Um, probably. If we have like public research on these topics, we can also learn how to how to counteract them so then it's, we, 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 can, we can use the same technology against these purposes. So even though you don't know what's going to come out of a large language model, like the one that's going to run on these supercomputers, still 
you have to be able to, and you are, I would assume, going to put filters on there so that it, it like, a, like a, something that would say, if the answer is racist, misogynist, homophobic, etc., don't publish, don't send it to the end user, something like that, right? What, what, there's probably a term for this, filters or... Guardrails, some people guardrails, say? Guardrails, guardrails. Are, are um, those easy to implement? No, they're not easy to implement. So this is, this is uh, like, there's two ways how you, how you can do it. You can do, do, do it based on rules. So whenever uh, the user says something about bombs, you just don't answer. You just say, hey... Uh, if uh, bombs <laughs> equals no answer. Equals no answer. But this is, of course, uh, like uh, going to be difficult because there's a lot of uh, legit questions that you can ask regarding bombs. Uh, and that will like barrier users from doing very reasonable things. Um, uh, so this is this is this is not like you can make it more and more and more sophisticated. But in the end, you will also have to like manually set up an, an incredible amount of rules. So you will be censoring it then. This is is it censoring? No, it's it's like I think this. The, so we're not going to build something where you can log into a web page and talk to it. This is like this is a product. This is like it, like OpenAI has a hundred people working on only this. Maybe I'm even off by a factor of ten mm -hmm. in that respect. So this is this we this we can't do. We're not like they we don't have the resources for that. And we're like in the end we're scientists. We're trying to understand the principles. So uh, but for a running product, you of course have to exactly uh, have a clear idea what are the limits and what do I want my customers to to to, to experience. We're more in the front of the like technology developments. We're trying to build what then can be used at the later stage as a chat bot. And, but also for other tools. For example, for document processing, if, you want to, if you're an insurance company and you want to process the 10 million documents of your 100 million year history, you don't need an LLM that has guardrails because your right. input is safe. Right. It's really like a different, a different case. In this chat case, it's super, in this case, it makes super sense to have guardrails, but there's enough cases where this is really just not necessary. If these supercomputers, or if, if, if the future fastest European supercomputer can consume as much energy as 50,000 people uh, living in, a, I don't know, a small city here, what is the answer to that ethics question? You're, you're, it's a, this, this technology is important, it helps a lot of people out there, and yet it's polluting. It is. What is the answer? The answer is uh, we have to understand what to do with this technology. Because computers are advancing all the time, they're getting better and better. And if we want to make sure that, that we in Germany, we in Europe know what is, what, how this technology develops so we are prepared and we can take part, we need to do research on, on, on this technology. And there's a price tag. It, and this price tag has, like, has units of euros and dollars and CO2. Yeah, tons of CO2. Yeah. Yes. So without this research center here, Germany and Europe fall behind in the, oh, in the, in, in the information race? Yes. Can you say that? Yes. There's like the, the landscape is super wide. There's many, many research organizations and institutions in Germany and Europe. So if you cut out one, you only cut out one. But I think this overall, this, this academic system is super important. This is not only because they do their technologies develop, but also because this is where like the, the people who are going to build next generation technology, where they're educated. And this, of course, goes for Jülich. We have so many bright young scientists here. and You're teaching them? We're teaching them. Like, we have a few hundred PhD students in the center. We have ties to the universities in the, in the environment, and in, in Aachen, and Cologne, and Düsseldorf. Are we sitting at the center of European AI technology, publicly funded? European AI technology? Is, is that there's so many people doing great things and there's great research infrastructure in, in, in Europe. So this is... This is but is like, that just stuff the next being year? modest right now? Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Are you just being modest or...? 
I'm a scientist, I must be fair. And like there's like, but in the next year we will have, in maybe two years, we will have really the greatest facility for doing AI research here. Like it's gonna be the coolest thing that money can buy if you wanna do these things. <clears throat> and this is it right here. This, is, this concrete slab that you're looking at is the future of European supercomputing and connected with that, Europe's publicly financed artificial intelligence platform and maybe platforms. Did we leave anything out yeah. here when it comes to supercomputing, artificial intelligence? Anything you guys have to say about this topic, let us know in the comments or via email. Right. SU at DW.com. Science unscripted. Probably it, huh? <laughs>